Welcome back to Breslov Therapy, Breslov Campus. Bezit Hashem, some memories that I have of a Breslov or a prominent Breslov of the previous generation, Rav Michal Dorfman of Last Memory, stories that I heard from him about himself, which demonstrate how a person has to be so determined not to give up, no matter what. Rav Michal Dorfman lived in a suburb of Moscow, and for 37 years, he submitted every year a request to get a visa to leave Russia, communist Russia, in order to get to the Holy Land, to Eretz Israel. He eventually came here in 1972. But for 37 years, he was stuck in the exile of communist Russia. And it was very hard for him because other Breslov Hasidim, other fellow Jews, they didn't have to wait that long. They eventually got exit visas after 10 years, 15 years, 20, 25, 30. But he was 37 years. He was like the last of the people from his generation to leave. And it broke him seriously. He said to me that the last year, 1972, when again he submitted his request, because the law was in Soviet Russia, that you're only allowed to submit a request for a visa once a year, that's it. So every year they would say, niet, 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 no, no, no. The last year he called and he left the message by the, I guess it was the interest bureau, whoever was in charge of giving the visa. So calling him back was this lady who was the head of this interest. And she said to Rav Michal Dorfman, she said, Dorfman, Stop asking a request for your visa. 37 years you're asking. You're never going to leave our mother Russia. You're never going to leave her. He heard that. And initially he was extremely broken when she said that. But immediately he got the greatest encouragement. Because he recalled what Pharao told Moshe before the last plague of the ten plagues. Then Pharaoh said to him, Be gone. Don't come here again, because next time you come, you will die. If I see you come up to me one more time, you'll be killed. You'll be put to death. That's what Pharaoh said to Moshe Rabbeinu when Moshe Rabbeinu was giving it to Pharaoh by the ninth plague. So Rabbi Michal felt this severity just by Pharaoh. The severity of Pharaoh was the last plague, and it was the opening of the Exodus. He, for somehow, some reason, felt her saying this to break his morale, that you're never going to leave, was paralleling what Pharaoh's harshness was, and that that year would be a breakthrough. Afterwards of that year, the beginning of, the, the end of 1971, came along Sukkot, and Sukkot, the, the festival of Sukkot in Russia, in Moscow, wasn't at all practical. Because during Sukkot, normally, it was almost raining all the time. And the halacha is that if it's raining, you don't sit in a sukkah. And yet Rav Michal every year would build the sukkah for the sake of at least building the sukkah. If I can't sit in my sukkah, at least let me build one. And sometimes like five minutes here, ten minutes where there, where there's no rain, and he was able to go into the sukkah. So that year, Rav Michal built all alone his sukkah in his backyard, and he had no help to build it. And he was getting a bit older. He was already, possibly, we can say, in his, uh, in his 50s already. And he was building the sukkah, and I forgot the exact material, but it was like a, t a type of a tar type of uh, covering material, which was able to stand up and to become walls. So he was trying, and it was heavy. And he was trying all, all alone, putting up the walls of the sukkah. And his wife was at home preparing lunch or something like that. And while Rav Michal was preparing the sukkah, a strong wind came with, st with storm, and the whole sukkah, which is heavy walls of this tar type of material, collapsed on Rav Michal. And he was under all of it, and he became so broken, he began to cry. And his wife screamed, Oi! And she couldn't help him because she's old, she's an older woman, she can't help him, she's weak. And Rabbi Michal was there all alone under the walls of the sukkah. No one's there to help him. 
and he felt for a second so broken because it's not enough what the interest lady told him you know this feeling of failure that you're never going to leave and then on top of it he kills himself to build a sukkah that he can barely use and now they make it from heaven so difficult that a wind a a strong storm wind came and just collapsed the whole sukkah upon him he was sitting there crying but then he realized again that if it's getting so bad something good is about to happen with that he said to me he got energy and he felt like superman and he just pushed the walls of the sukkah got out from under and started again and built the sukkah and he told me by miracle that year was the least rain ever they had during the Chag of Sukkot. That this was an indicator, what he went through, this failure and difficulty was an indicator of something good going to happen. So that Sukkah, he said, was the most amazing Sukkah that was able to sit the majority of the seven days, the eight days in the Sukkah. And that year, unexpectedly, amazingly, he finally, finally got his exit visa arriving in Yerushalayim on the day of Shushan Purim in the year 1972.